Okay, welcome back. Um, for this video, we will talk about the element of tense. <coughs> yeah, so talking about tense, <coughs> um, some games, for example, like chess, uh, they are purely strategic. Yeah, uh, when you play chess, uh, there is no luck involved at all. Yeah, it is purely your strategy to be able to win the game. Yeah. There are, however, um, many board games out there which take advantage from the element of chance, or sometimes you call it luck, yeah, or randomness. Yeah, for example, uh, card games usually they use shuffling mechanic to randomize the order of the cards. Yeah, RPGs uh, use dice to vary the damage. Yeah, because if uh, the damage output is the same for uh, every time you attack, then there is no fun at all. Yeah? There is no element of surprise. Yeah, so sometimes uh, RPGs use his dice uh, to have more variation. Yeah, for example, uh, you roll dice to determine wh whether or not your uh, your attack will hit critically or actually miss. Yeah. And then uh, rock paper scissors games uh, looks random, but is it random? Yeah, we will take a look at this game later. So why board games uses uh, randomness here? Uh, there are five possibilities or five reasons why board games use randomness. Yeah, the first one is to delay or prevent solvability of the board game itself. Yeah, the second is creating competitiveness. Yeah, uh, <coughs> this uh, this is especially true for new players. Yeah, versus the expert players. Yeah, the third reason is to increase variety of the game itself. Yeah, the fourth, uh, creating dramatic moments, and the last one is to enhance decision making for each player. Yeah, let's take a look at each one. The first one is delaying or preventing solvability. Uh, a game is considered solvable if every possibility is known ahead, uh, even before you play the game, and uh, you will win if you play with the correct order. Yeah, for example, uh, the simplest game is Tic Tac Two. Yeah, maybe in your uh, artificial intelligence class you have been thought how to solve. Or create a solver for tic tac two. Yeah, the possibility is um, uh, I can't remember how many possibilities are there in tic tac two. Yeah, but it is uh, relatively small in numbers. Yeah, so a uh, solve a uh, solvable game loses interest over time. Yeah, when you play the same game over and over again, then you will wane your interest over that game. Yeah. Uh, for for example, if you play Tic Tac 2 uh, multiple times, then uh, maybe for the first time you will still get interested yeah, in playing Tic Tac 2. Yeah, but after fourth or fifth game, then uh, you will get bored because uh, there are uh, so little variation here. Yeah, compared to chess, yeah. chess is actually solvable. Yeah, but there are too many possibilities for the human to calculate. Yeah, later we will uh, take a look how many possibilities are there in playing chess. Yeah, how many are uh, possible steps and how many games are there uh, in chess. Yeah, yeah, it is solvable to the computer, but. Uh, it is considered not solvable for us humans here. Yeah. So uh, for chess, uh, it is still enjoyable to play multiple times. Yeah, the element of chance or luck is added to the game, so it will still feel interesting and fresh each time you play. Yeah, because uh, the states of the game are completely different each time you play the game. Yeah, it pre it also prevents you to completely master the game because any decision you take may result in different outcomes. Yeah, uh, when you completely master any game, that uh, you will lose interest over the game. Yeah, so uh, to prevent that, uh, we will incorporate the element of chance. Yeah, the second reason is to create competitiveness in a pure strategy game. 
there is a tendency that experts yeah, or players who have already mastered the game will always mean offer noobs or uh, less experienced players. Yeah. For experts, uh, this is quite a enjoyable game, nevertheless, yeah, because they will still feel satisfied when they win over the game. Yeah. Otherwise, if they lose, yeah, they will think. Uh, maybe say something wrong in my strategy. Yeah, so they will uh, devise a new strategy uh, for the next games. Yeah, that is for experts. However, yeah, for us, uh, for less experienced games, for noobs, yeah, this will result in early boredom and frustration. Yeah, because, well, um. I am competing over the experts, yeah. Uh, I am new to this game. How can I win? Yeah. Yeah, maybe you have already uh, experienced this frustration over the digital board games, uh, sorry, digital games, and it's also true in board games as well. Yeah. So, uh, if you incorporate randomness in your game, yeah, uh, it can create competitiveness for its players. Yeah, uh, we will give uh, some advantages over the less experienced players. Yeah, uh, they have better chance to win over experts because uh, they know that there is always a chance of winning the game over the experts. Yeah, no matter how uh, small the chance chances is. Yeah. However, if they actually lose the game. Yeah, uh, the feeling of losing is still decreased here. Yeah, usually uh, you can always blame for your bad luck. Yeah. So, uh, by adding randomness here, yeah, less experienced players will still be able to enjoy the game. Yeah, if they lose, uh, they may blame for their bad luck. And I want to try again. Yeah, maybe next time I will, I will win. Yeah, if they Lose again. However, uh, they they will still be interested on trying over and over again until they actually win the game. Yeah, that's why uh, sometimes uh, this randomness can also make the player addicted to the game. Yeah, it is true uh, already for digital games. If you play any gacha games, then uh, you will know the feeling. Yeah, uh, if you uh, pull uh, less. Or common card, then okay. This is my bad luck. I want to uh, draw another card. Yeah, uh, it is common card again. Yeah, but sometimes, uh, especially if the card is very limited. Yeah, uh, maybe uh, with the time limited event, then uh, I don't care. Uh, I want to pull as many as I want until I get the ultra rare card. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <coughs> it is. Um, let's say it is a side effect. Of randomness, yeah, it can actually create the addictiveness, yeah. But uh, let's take a set aside for addictiveness, yeah. Uh, we as board game develop developer uh, cares more about the less experienced players over here, yeah. So uh, we can give advantage for the new players, yeah, and the newbies to be able to win over the experts. Okay, the next reason is to increase the variety of the game. Yeah, the game without any element of luck always starts with the same setup. Yeah. So for example, uh let's talk take a look at chess. Yeah. How, how many times you play chess, it will start in the same position, in the same state every time. Yeah. This will result in the same experience every time players play the game. Yeah, sometimes uh, it will create boredomness over the game. Yeah, um, there is no variation at all for this game, so uh, I am bored. With the element of luck, we will increase some variety in the game. Yeah, because uh, the game will start with a fresh condition every time you play the game. Yeah, so when the element of luck is applied, players will have many options. To determine how they will play the game, this varies the experience players will get from the game, and furthermore, it will increase the replayability of your game. Yeah, so that's a good 
point we want to have yeah uh, we want our players to play our game over and over again we can also uh, take advantage of the element of luck or the element of randomness yeah to create dramatic moments yeah uh, here i have some examples yeah the first one a player attacks the opponent using dice and the dice result determines winning or losing yeah for so for example maybe some of you have played king of tokyo yeah it uses uh dice yeah and the result of the dice will determine if your attack actually hits or not yeah the other game is merchant and marauders yeah maybe uh, some of you have already watched the let's play videos yeah uh, they also use dice in this game yeah the second example is when the player draws any card from a deck yeah the drawn card will determine the strategy or chance of winning or even losing yeah for example here uh, we have exploding kitten saboteur and any of deck building game Okay, the next one is to enhance decision making yes because with the element of randomness uh, there are no definitive winning strategy uh, we don't have the exact way how to win the game because every choices will bear their or their own risk uh, because of this unknown factor its decision becomes increasingly complex you will have to think carefully about the, the, the decision yeah which one you will make uh, which one you will choose and uh, whether or not you are ready for the cons consequences you will have from taking that choice okay so uh, we can incon incorporate the element of luck using bits or game component yeah some game components uh, which encourage element of chance are dice yeah obviously you have already played some uh, board games using dice yeah the second one is cards yes uh, simply by just shuffling the cards then you have already created the element of randomness this the third one is pseudo random number generators yeah or rng you should, yeah and so on okay let's take a look at each component shall we um dice usually we we are very familiar with the six-sided die yeah for one die uh, the proper the probability of every side occurring is distributed evenly yeah that is one sixth so uh, if you remember the probability theory from your high school then you can calculate um, the pro probability of one occurring yeah it's one over six the probability of two occurring yeah the occurrence of two is only once yeah over the every possible uh, occurrence six so you have one six yeah so for one dice uh, it is distributed evenly one over six for two dice however uh, you must calculate it uh, using some theory or you can just uh, brute force yeah uh, listing every possible outcomes then uh, you calculate the possibility of or the probability of that occurring yeah so uh, is it 1 over 36 is it 1 over 12 yeah later uh, i will show you that it turns out it is not evenly distributed yeah what, what about three dice four six twelve and so on yeah and also uh, in board games we we have uh n sided die yeah? uh, we we don't usually uh have to use six sided yeah we we also have uh four sided um those of you who played flashpoint uh, we have eight sided die yeah uh, one up to eight if you remember the black dice uh, the black die yeah it is eight sided uh, for rpg players dungeon and dragons you you have a 10 and 20 sided die also yeah and there is also 
100 cited day, although it is uh, rarely used for now. Yeah. So uh, using the pro probability theory, you will get that the greater the number of dice, the more it will likely to follow a bell curve, or usually we call it normal distribution. Yeah. Uh, we won't talk about normal distribution here. Uh, you have already uh, been thought about it in uh, other courses. Yeah. So please uh, take a look at the normal distribution again. Yeah. And the probability theory as well. So um, uh, I will stop here. Yeah. Let's have some fun first before we continue the topics. Yeah, let's have a workshop first. Yeah, uh, please pause the video first and then do the workshop. Yeah, uh, separately. We have, uh, I have provided the document for you. Yeah, please take a look at the uh, Microsoft Word document provided in the Google Classroom. Uh, please stop the video for now and do the workshop. Yeah. Oh, uh, I will explain uh, briefly about the workshop. Yeah, uh, the first thing you need to do is finding your friend. Yeah, preferably on the same class uh, to play this game, but please do it remotely. Yeah, remember uh, the physical distance. For now, uh, just do it over the internet, over the Zoom, over the Google uh, Hangouts Meet, or anything you want. Yeah, Skype maybe. Yeah. Um. You, if you can't find any friend, then uh, you can also play solo. But it it is not fun to play solo for this workshop. Yeah. And then uh, please install uh, any dice throwing apps from Play Store or iOS. Uh, here I have provided one a dice duty app, or you can also use some websites here. Yeah. Uh, www.random.org slash dice and you also can ask Google instead yeah so uh, uh, this is the example of the dice strategy here is uh, I think it's um, a 10 sided die yeah. yeah if you want to ask the Google just query for for example, like 1d6 or simply d6, yeah, let's try it here. Uh, I will query for d6. Yeah, and Google uh, will throw the die for you. Yeah, so here uh, my result is 4. Uh, I can reroll and it will give me 6, yeah, and so on. Yeah, uh, before... Uh, doing the workshop, uh, I will talk about the test notation first. Yeah, actually, if you remember, I have already explained uh, to you about the dice notation. Yeah, but uh, I will refresh it for you. Yeah, the dice notation is heavily used in D and D Dungeons and Dragons game. Yeah, uh, they they it is usually called a D twenty game because they use a twenty sided die. Yeah, so uh, the notation is A, D, X, and sometimes they add plus or minus Y, yeah, where A is the number of dice thrown. Yeah, for example, uh, let's say 1, D, 6. Yeah, it will result in one die being thrown by Google. Yeah, and then D uh, denotes dice or die, yeah. You can use a lowercase d or you can use uppercase d, yeah. but usually uh, I prefer the lowercase d here. X uh, represents number of faces, yeah. so uh, you, you can use 4, 6, 8, 10, 20, or even 100, yeah. but uh, uh, again, 100 uh, cited die is uncommon for now. Yeah. And then the plus or minus y, uh, it is optional. Uh, you don't always see this notation, but if uh, you have plus or minus y, uh, it it acts as a modifier. Yeah. So, for example here, 1d6 or simply d6 uh, means throw one-sided, uh, one six-sided die. Uh, 2d8 means throw two eight-sided 
dies ya. Uh, let's try it over here. Over here, two d eight. Yeah, it will result in Google throwing a two <coughs> eight sided dice. And then three d six plus five means that uh, you will throw three six sided dice and add the result by five. Yes, uh, the result is something like this 3 3 d 6 plus 5 yeah oh this is a rare occurrence yeah uh, i rolled 1 1 and 1 the, the possibility is 1 over 216 <laughs> yeah uh, uh, i hope i have i i have not depleted my luck for for now <laughs> yeah because this is a very rare occurrence yeah, so uh, I rolled three dice, uh, six-sided dice. Uh, it's result in one, one, and one. Yeah, the sum is three, and then I add five as modifier here. So my total is eight. Yeah, uh, later if you want, uh, you can remove the die simply by just clicking the die. Yeah, and you can also add uh, another die here. here. Uh, I will reset my modifier first to zero. Yeah, and then uh, let's say uh, you need to throw a uh, one d eight and one d six. <coughs> yeah, you can uh, add different die here. Yeah, you can draw and so on. Yeah. So uh, it's up to you. Uh, you can use Google for simplicity, or you may want to install the Dice app. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's stop here, and we will do the workshop in a separate video. Yeah. Uh, I will give the link to the video in the uh, sorry in the description. So uh, click on it now, and then we will go back here to continue the topic in uh, element of random yeah okay so welcome back yeah have you enjoyed the workshop yeah i hope you have enjoyed the uh, simple game yeah and i also hope that it will give you some hands-on experience on uh, whether or not you feel the game is balanced or not yeah okay uh, let's talk about the second component to create the element of randomness yeah that is cards yeah you can use card uh, in every way to incorporate the element of randomness yeah cards can be shuffled to randomize uh, to randomize its order the other order and then you can put it face down or face up and then you can give to players usually to hold on their hands and so on yeah the, there are many ways to use cards in your board game so uh, the accessible information for players can be restricted using the cards yeah uh, players only know the cards in their own hand yeah usually uh, you you can only look at your own cards yeah you may not look at the other players card yeah um aside of the private information there is the card in your hands uh, players can also get the public information yeah from any face up cards on the table or or on the game board yeah, so uh, players can also calculate the probability of any cards appearing from the deck. Yeah, the remaining cards. Yeah, usually uh, some board games uh, allows you to look at the discard pile. Yeah, uh, so if you have have thrown from a deck of cards, then you discard it into the discard pile. Yeah, uh, some board games allows you to actually look at the discard pile to, de to determine uh, whether uh, there is still a card remaining in the deck yeah, which has not appeared and you can calculate the possibility yeah, or the probability when the card will actually come out 
So here uh, I have an example of Exploiting Kitten. Yeah, maybe you have played Exploiting Kitten. Uh, initially, when your deck is still full, the probability of the kit Exploiting Kitten card appearing is still small. Yeah, let's say that. Yeah, uh, this is for example only. Yeah, so for for example, uh, I have thirty cards in my deck with only one Exploiting Kitten card. Then the probability of exploiting kitten card being uh, drawn is one over thirty. Yeah. However, the less cards in the deck, the greater uh, the chance you will pick the exploiting kitten card. Yeah. So, for example, um, let's say from the thirty uh, cards of my deck, yeah. Now it, it's only ten cards remaining. Yeah, and the exploiting kitten is uh, has not appeared. Yeah, so uh, the probability of I getting or drawing the exploiting kitten card is now one tenth, yeah, or ten percent, which is greater uh, than the initial deck. Where yeah, one over thirty is uh, I think three percent or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next bit is the pseudo random number generator or pseudo RNG, yeah, random gen random uh, random number generators. Uh, usually, uh, we abbreviate it R and G, yeah. So uh, here we use a companion app or a web that produces random events or random number, yeah. Um, if you remember from uh, other courses, yeah, uh, especially for you informatics, yeah. Uh, you know, due to the nature of computer or the nature of these random number generators, yeah, they actually create a pseudo random. Yeah, it is not completely random. Yeah, because we follow uh, some functions that will generate uh, results that looks random, but it is actually not. <coughs> yeah, uh, the examples of the board game that uses a pseudo RNG. Yeah, uh, SCOM board game uses uh, the companion app to generate events, and the Dominion and Marvel Legendary uh, also uses app to randomize setup cards, and they even feature the smart randomize. Yeah, why? Uh, we will take a look later. Okay, so uh, this is the XCOM board game app. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, we don't have the uh, XCOM board game uh, in our uh, in our collection yeah maybe uh, sometimes uh, please take a look at the let's play videos on the internet yeah it must be played using this uh, companion app yeah so it will randomly generate uh, any events that uh, we must follow <coughs> in, uh, to play the board game yeah, the other example is the Marvel Legend uh, Legendary. Yeah, in this game, uh, the setup uses uh, five hero cards in random. Yeah, we have uh, over thirty heroes in Marvel Legendary. Yeah, each hero has uh, ability or color combo. So if we purely randomize this uh, initial five hero cards, then uh, we may break the combos. Yeah, that's why the companion app will do a smart randomize here so that the initial heroes uh, can still be related to each other yeah uh, even though it is randomized but the heroes can still be be comboed each other yeah that's why they uh, break about the smart random yeah because uh, if you pure purely random then uh, sometimes the combo does not work at all Okay, uh, any other bits that can be used to produce some randomness, yeah. Uh, for example, like coin flips, uh, this will present a 50-50 chance. And then you can also use a spinner here, yeah. Or sometimes we call it a roulette. Yeah, uh, you spin the arrow to determine the outcome. Yeah, another way to incorporate randomness, uh, card portals, or any any bits, yeah, maybe some meeples, uh, put into the pouch, and then we will take random randomly from the pouch. Yeah, 
if you remember, if you played village, then uh, there is a step or crown in the game where we actually uh, take some uh, or exactly four four villagers from the black pouch. Yeah, so uh, it is also random. Yeah, the example of using a coin, it's uh, the game Runebound, the third edition. Yeah, uh, I can't remember exactly uh, how to play this game. Yeah, but if not, I'm not mistaken, when we want to attack, uh, we will actually uh, flip a number of coins and then we will determine the results from there. Yeah, so uh the attacks may be successful uh the attacks may be buffed or even missed entirely yeah so uh, this is the example of using coin flips okay so uh, that's all about the element of chance yeah in the next video we will talk about the element of strategy yeah. uh, in short with the element of strategy, we usually don't incorporate any p randomness over there. Yeah, it is purely strategy. So how to create a board game that is uh, purely strategic or how do we incorporate the strategic uh, element into our board game? Yeah, that's a topic for the next video. Yeah, please watch it right after this.